Hey guys, welcome to Monday morning and our new schedule here at Electrical Theology Esoteric Life Coaches. The next few weeks, months, however long it takes, we'll be doing classes. And coaching classes, same thing to me basically, but it's also, uh, I'm just here to share esoteric knowledge for the purpose of gaining enlightenment. And we're going to do this by unfolding the moment with an undefended heart. That means we do it without ego, we open up, we listen, we take in what is going to resonate with you, and then just put on the back burner or just regard the rest of the stuff. And we're going to do this by taking responsibility for your thoughts, actions, and emotions. You are the creator of all your thoughts. If other people's thoughts are impressed upon you, then you have the ability with your thoughts to do something about it. But it, it all comes down to you being responsible for your thoughts, actions, and emotions. All right, guys? So what I said is if you need to, all the 50 classes before this, or sermons, or whatever you want to call them, was your training ground. It was for those who were wanting to initiate a whole new life and to amplify in degrees your ability to receive and transmit information or formed ions from one realm to another, one person to another, one being to another, whatever this may be for you or why you're even wanting to learn this information. Now I will teach these classes at the same time to the intermediate or to the beginners, the intermediates and the advanced people. The advanced people, y'all should be aware of some of the stuff that I'm teaching and be able to discern what it is I'm saying without me having to say it or I'll put it in plain sight in the way in which I arrange my letters or in the way in which I transmit the frequency of a sentence or something or a symbol I put up. Alright guys? If you have any questions, comments, definitely leave them down below. If this is your first time, uh, it can be somewhat of a beginner class. If you're new to this channel, then I would highly encourage you to go back and watch those 50 or so episodes and get an idea of what it is I'll be talking about. It is the foundation to the entire classes I, I will be teaching going forward. So our new schedule we'll just call these new weekly classes and I'll tell you the way in which I'll be teaching them. So Monday today uh, it'll be Cosmic Weekly Briefing. What I mean by that is that throughout the week and through even today there are certain energies that are floating around and I'm not going to go into detail. What I'm going to do is just simply get the message from off-worlders and maybe a consensus from this world and see how they are compatible or not compatible. Can we expect different events as I will sort of tell you here soon of what I think will be coming and I've been teaching this stuff for years and years and pretty much what I look at and say uh, comes to fruition or if you want to call it prophecy, if you want to call it prediction, you want to call it premonitions. Uh, I don't really care what you call it. It's just patterns to me. It's electrical patterns. Right? They're wavelengths and waveforms. And if you can read those wavelengths or waveforms, then you're able to then discern or be able to predict what's going to happen next, right? Off a of cycle, off of calendar cycles and such. Again, for me, it's not really psychic. All psychic abilities are just honing in on the cycles or the patterns of electricity. All right, guys? So for instance, of what, I, what patterns I see coming up, and again, people who have been in my classes for years know these, these, these predictions have been, or patterns have been predicted uh, that I've been doing for the last four or five years with classes, uh, in-person classes, and then uh, for the last decades I've been doing this stuff, but I keep it on a low level because I don't want special interest groups uh, coming after me for certain knowledge I have. But on the same sense, uh, if you look at certain calendars from around the world, biblical calendars, uh, Mason calendars, Julian calendars, Caesarian calendars, there's all these calendars and, and a whole lot more. But my point being is that we're in certain cycles, uh, and when I've talked about this in some videos in the past year, I think probably 30 videos ago about cycles, life cycles. But anyway, long story short, let's just get to that. I've seen 
I was able to call in uh, a couple years ago in March when uh, it, a certain demic came out, and by, that's about as far as I'll go into that, but I called it right in the month, uh, almost about a week from when it, it got officially announced. But that going forward, I also said last year that a lot of uh, political officials will be taken down uh, because of the corruption and whatnot that's in that system. That's not my judgment. I'm just using their verbiage for their own one side telling about the other side. But there has been a race of beings who have controlled this planet for a couple thousand years, and that's shifting over. And y'all may know them as tall grays or something like this, but they were in bed with a lot of the political people for the last hundred years or so. Longer than that, but in our current history, I'll talk about the last few hundred years and especially the last hundred years, is that now some of the original political uh, icons out there um, who created some deals with the, the Greys, and the Greys are about a hive mind, they're about controlling the mind, and they do it through uh, circumventing the financial system and the media system, and that's about all I'll say there. And... So I said last year that a lot of political figures, and, and we've seen this every day from UK to Europe to America to everywhere, that uh, people are either dying or being taken out of office or retiring or quitting. Uh, and then we just saw here recently, this last weekend, a big political figure uh, that went out. <clears throat> now, in that king and queendom, uh, I don't foresee the uh, king they say is going to be taking uh Effect. I don't see that happening. I think there'll be more stuff coming out that he will not be taking office. And that's, uh, y'all follow the news of night, you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into more on that. And then uh, uh, September 24th, 25th, and 26th, you're going to see some major events. You'll probably see the stock market crash another 40%, which then will cause a cataclysmic event, or you'll see the cataclysmic event happen first which will be a major earthquake between 6.8 and 7.2. And it can go anywhere from around the world, China, anywhere, or maybe we'll even see it in around uh, California or off the coast. Or we may see some tidal wave coming off that then affects New York, Manhattan, and that area. But those are some of the patterns that I see happening, and we'll see if they come out or not. I don't always know the exact details or, or the massive effect that will happen, but I know that on those dates because of certain cycles in energy building and planetary alignments, that there are major events that will happen on that. So we'll see how they exactly play out and what happens. But the cataclysmic event itself will then cause the stock market crash. Or like I said, the stock market, then you'll see the cataclysmic event. But either way, um, you'll see some of those predictions. And then by the end of the year, this uh, old regime that's been running the planet for a few thousand years, and especially the last couple hundred years, in the media and whatnot, they're all being taken out. And then we'll, we, we will see a new dawn come. We'll see new energy finally taking effect. We'll see the higher frequencies. The uh, galactic neighbors who want to see us uh, thrive. And the energy will be now incentivized to, for you to do everything in life, not to keep you in debt. Right. There will be other financial things, or so will be the financial parties that want to track everything you do, and people will freely give up their information for that, and that's fine too. But for those who are seeking higher vibrational knowledge and existence, separate of that, of the mainstream, then uh, we will then align with the higher frequencies, all right? All right, so again, we'll be talking about mediumship, the other side, off-worlders, ETs, and other names. I have a fly flying around here, guys. So if I swat it, if I take time to swat it, I do. And then uh, Wednesdays, we'll talk about the. Uh, well, let's go back to Tuesday real quick. Is that Tuesday? And we'll look at the ABCs of the ETs and the mediumship, and really, what does all that inquire? And it's not normally going to be your traditional stuff, but I will show you the arcane teaching briefly, but I want you to understand it from the electrical perspective. And the electrical perspective takes away all the, uh, it dispels all the myths about the religious side about it, because if you just break it down, it's all electrical. The Bible, 
the Mahabharata, the Vedas, all this stuff, when you read it from an electrical perspective, you understand that it's all talking about, it's just a cosmic blueprint of how for us to understand that we're all one electricity, uh, divided in many, many ways, but we are uh, one electricity or the one. All right? And then Wednesdays, we're going to get into the esoteric tarot. So, yeah, I will show you the tarot, but I'm, again, I'm going to teach you it from the electrical perspective and then be able to apply it to the esoteric as well as the exoteric. Okay. And Thursday, then we're going to use the secret grid that we went over. And again, if, you, if you're just first time new to this channel, you're not going to understand what I mean by the grid. Or if you are advanced, then you may be able to keep up, but we've already talked about this grid uh, at least five or six videos and continually used it throughout uh, the training program, if you will. And then uh, understanding more about the realms of expanding consciousness, because it's your consciousness, so we're just going to expand it so you can tap into deeper realms, dimensions, and so forth. Friday, then we'll talk about how to take all this that we learned Monday through Thursday and then apply it. Uh, into mediumship or into manifestation. The manifestation is understanding that this Shambhala hierarchy God. Now I've already had a prerequisite class on this, so you have to go back and understand this class. Alright? So let's get on to today's message. So Monday Divine Messages. And what I'm going to do a why would again this is a class format yeah, and then be able to break down what it is I'm doing and again we already had the basic the foundation of the 50 videos before this but this will be the foundation or this will be where the foundation comes into practice all right all right divine galactic messages now I understand that in one sense I understand the folklore and myths and people talking to a collective called Michaels or Seths or whatever all that's great. I'm not here to dispute any of that. Everyone has their way of communicating. But for me, all the communications I have have to be two-way communication. Meaning that I'm a participant in this communication just as I would be with any individual I'm talking with or group. Right? I'm just not going to sit there and have this group tell me everything. And, and in one sense you can. I know that's sort of contradictory. I can take down the message, download it, and then what I do with it, we'll talk about later. But you can have a two-way communication with any of these, is my point. Just because you're downloading and it seems like a one-sided conversation, it doesn't have to be. A conversation is kind, meaning with, verse, their verse, your verse, of ions. The conversation is having a two-way communication. right? And that's why I, this is the way I come at it. right? I understand... And I can tap into these when I'm in front of a group. I can tap into these these collective groups. And it's almost like there's 50 people in a room and I'm taking questions from them. If one person in that group cannot answer the question, then somebody else will answer that question. And for me, they come in different tones. I can, I can distinguish if it's, let's say, a male voice or female voice, a thick voice or thin voice, um, a harsh voice or soft voice, a mean voice or loving voice. Because all these groups that people connect with aren't always what we will call nice in our terms of good and bad here on earth. Some of these come off very strict, very stern, and they don't have a lot of patience for ignorance or repeating questions. And so they're going to come off like they're mean, like a professor in college. You know, if you don't pay attention, they're going to get on you. And so there's a lot of different dynamics that go on with communicating. Now, depending on who you want to communicate with, right, you can open it up to the broad vast of galactic frequencies that are transmitting their signal. And just like a, uh, a trucker on the road calling out to anyone and saying, breaker, breaker. Right? And here, we'll just call out and say, hey, anyone out there? I got my ears on. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to hear you. I'm willing to have a conversation. Or set your tone for what it is you want. If you want a two-way com conversation, then have it. If you only want a one-way conversation, have it. Right? Meaning that if you just want to listen and not do and not have say anything back, then that's your right to do as well. And just imagine that other galactic families and people are transmitting and calling out to us, and then we answer that call. 
right? Some of you may think this is a calling from above, right? And again, electricity is everywhere in anything. Rocks have electricity running through them. The planet has electricity, all planets. So when you're tapping into electrical current, you're going to get a signal. And so we'll distinguish a little more mediumship of how to distinguish who it is and what it is you're talking with. Well, for right now, we're just on Monday classes. It says get a divine message. All right, and I'm just giving you a little layout of how I do it. And then we'll see what that message is. All right? So before you do any type of message, you need to make sure you're grounded. And what do I mean by that? Right? Grounded is just having your antenna up and making sure that your you have a solid foundation and, and take responsibility for your thoughts, actions, and emotions. That no matter what the conversation or message is, that you can handle it. Right? If you can't handle this stuff, it's going to seem weird or, or you're going to think you're being possessed or you think there's devils in the work. There is no devil in electricity, people. I hate to tell you that. But if you put your finger in there, you'll damn well think it was the devil that bit you. But it's not. It's just electricity. All right? So we're going to learn how to, to ground ourselves. And grounding is by consciously taking a deep breath. Your breath is your electrical divine connection. That centers you, and once you center, that takes the divine higher frequencies and grounds them into literally our earth, our ground. And that's grounding. Right? All your electricity in your house goes to a ground. Why? If it doesn't, it will shock you. And so basically, we're, the breath is the most important thing in your life. And then you have to make the choice that you're going to open up, that you're going to receive, and transmit if necessary or choice transmit if you're if you're choosing to transmit and or receive and then be open and undefended right no matter how they come across whatever their tone is we don't take offense we don't get our little feelings hurt right we just we're there we're taking responsibility I had professors in college and I went to a lot of colleges and some of them were just straight out dicks Right? I used to call someone Mr. Richard or Dr. Richard purposely. Right? And if they couldn't figure out what I was saying, right? and maybe you all know what I'm saying, I'm not going to say it, but they get my point. They just come off, you know, uh, ridiculous. But I eventually understood that I wasn't there for their personality. It wasn't personal. They don't know me from Adam or Eve. And so what I was able to do then uh, was just focus in on the message. So that's my point here, is focus in on the message. Don't worry so much about the messenger. Right? Again, we don't kill the mailman, mail person, mail carrier. Right? They're just messengers. All right? And then we, once we are undefended, our hearts are open, because the heart's sort of the neutral transmitter that allows the information to be transmitted or received. And then at that point, just be quiet and listen. Now, if you have a specific question you want to ask, requesting ions for your own personal life, this can go on a personal matter. Right? Or if you're doing groups. I used to do groups all the time, large groups, and bring in information. And bring in uh, relatives from the other side. And divine angel messages if you want. Demon messages if you want. Call them whatever you want. They're just messages, people. I'm not connected to the messengers themselves unless... Me and the messenger once want to have a conversation after the reading. Right? I can have conversations. I have conversations literally all day long with these beings. Right? Now, specific ones have been tuned off lately in the last couple of years because there has been a galactic war, and that's sort of part of the message. For some of y'all, your life may be really confusing right now and frustrating. And that no matter what you do, nothing works out. Or that you're having to leave or get fired or whatever this is from a one, one position and you're in a neutral zone, a brackish area, and waiting for the next message to come through. Right? This is what this message is about. It's about patience. It's going within. It's tapping into who you are. We've been living our lives through everyone else's ways of wanting us to live the way they want us to live. But now it's time to live the way you're ready to live. And to help you get there, you're going to get messages from the other side, from ancestors. There's ancestor realms. There's galactic divine realms. There's all sorts of realms, and we'll break those down. But for the mean, meantime, is that the messages we want to receive, for what reason or purpose are you choosing to receive that message? 
they're not going to tell you what to do. Right? And, and here's the caveat. Right? Their information is just their information, their perspective of what's going on with you or us here on planet Earth. It doesn't mean they're wiser. It just means they may have a broader perspective. Or they may have a narrow one and just trying to push their agenda. You don't know until you sit down and have a conversation with these people, with these beings or these groups. Right? I'm in control or in charge of or with that other being or person. All right? If I don't like what the, where the message is going, I shut it down. How, how do I shut it down? I cut them off with my mind. If that makes sense. And again, we'll get into this more in mediumship, but that's the sort of the exercise I'm getting with. And now I am going to come across very stern sometimes because I don't want a bunch of what we call in the business of, of selling cars and whatnot. I'm not a used car salesman, but... Um, or if you're selling anything, we don't want tire kickers. They just come around, kick your tires, look around, but they're not really serious in buying. Right? And so in here, don't mess with this realm because you take up time. There are certain operators on other realms that will answer your call, but you're only going to get so far until you're ready and serious about why it is, for what purpose are you choosing to communicate. And if you don't know, then maybe you can ask them. Say, hey, I'm not sure what I'm doing, how I'm asking, but again, you're going to encounter beings that are going to mess with you. That doesn't mean they're evil. Just like if you were to go into a sorority or a fraternity for the first time, they're going to mess with you. Does that mean they're evil? No, right? It's just part of the initiation. And what I'm doing here is initiating you into higher degrees, right? All right, so I will come off mean sometimes, stern sometimes, but I will come off funny sometimes. Hopefully it comes off funny. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, yeah, so Wednesday we'll deal with the esoteric tarot. We'll use a secret grid and then we'll understand how to manifest. But let's continue on with today's message. All right now, some of y'all can use some of these tools, crystal balls, flames, um, tarot, whatever. All these tools for me are just points of focus. They help you concentrate. They it's like breathing. If you're meditating, focus on your breath. Your breath is the light. It's a candle. It's a crystal ball into the future or into the past, right? Whatever this is for you. They're just points of focus, right? I put no power into these things other than to help me focus. Does that make sense? I don't give any power to tarot cards or just paper and ink. A flame is just electricity burning through fire, water, earth, and air, if you will. Right? So everything is electrical. There is no mystic or mystery to it all. Now the mystery is like a, 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 a novel that I'm reading that I want to see how it ends, right? There's a mystery to that, but it's not, um, this is what I'm looking for. It's not uh, evil. It's not mysterious in one sense. It's not, there's no magic. Magic is just science you don't understand yet, right? I understand magic. Magic is just, it has magi in it. Magi is just the teacher of hidden secret knowledge, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just teaching you this hidden secret knowledge that's in plain sight, but you were never taught it because the powers don't want you to know it or have it, and some of them do want you to have it, but want to see if you can get beyond the, your judgments and prejudices and, and racial and all those other divides. Right? If you're still judging, it means you're uneducated right? in the right places of divine knowledge. I'm not saying you can be the smartest person in the world, but if you don't have divine knowledge, then yes, you're illiterate to divine knowledge. And therefore, you're going to continue, continually be judgmental. Right? So, if you are finding yourself to be judgmental, then ask why. What information don't you have about that other person, place, or thing? Let's go on. So, as you download this information that comes through, is... What I used to do all the time, the information started coming in within the first, and now the speed at which the information is coming in, right? And when I get these messages, messages, I will talk faster, so I'll try to make sure I'm coherent and, and uh, legible or, or audible, or that what I'm saying is coming through clearly and I'm pronouncing the words enough, but the messages come through, let's just say, at a hundred times rate than what we can talk or think. 
but then as I would download and as you may download this information, a cool piece of information or awareness comes through and you want to hold on to that and grab it, but the message is still running. It's like sitting in a movie theater and all of a sudden something great happens and you're like, and you start talking out loud in the movie theater and saying, hey, I know who did it. You start saying, no, you're, you're missing the rest of the movie. All right. And you're going to irritate some of the people you're communicating with or the beings that you're communicating with. Just shut up, download the information. And when you feel it come to a, a sort of a fading out, and when, you, and when you start feeling the connection or the signal starting to fade or weaken, just allow it to fade or weaken or just say, hey, is there any last bit of information I need to know? Or do you need to know from me? And there may be one little last bit of information, but once that's done, it's done. Now, at that point, start recording down everything you did or what you, what you remember from that, because what's going to stick is what you really wanted to know. Right? I could have watched the whole baseball game, but basically all I wanted was who won at the end of the game because I may be part of a pool, uh, a betting pool. You know what I'm saying? I don't care about, don't give me the, you know, the minute by minute highlights, just who won. Right? That's all I need to know. <laughs> and so what's happening here is the telepath. Right? This is part of the path. This is part of the path and the plan we talked about, the planets, the plants. This is God's path. And when I refer to God, it's not the anthropomorphic God. It is an electrical consciousness, right? So telepath, tele, the part of that telepath or telepathic just means it's far off. In one essence, it is. I can talk to someone in China on my phone, but the person I'm talking to is right here where I'm at in the States, right here in my ear. Does it make sense? Their physical body is over there, but their voice is right here with me. So the same thing there. They're far off or maybe in a different phased dimension that is parallel to you right now. right? So don't focus so much on distance. right? It's just the frequencies that we're trying to hone in on. And the frequencies we're trying to hone in on are where we're using our telepath. It's like a telephone. right? I can bring them here in my head from millions of miles away. Or different di dimensions or realms. Am I making sense? So, and the path is just a course or a direction. And, and direction, again, is directing my ions. I direct my focus, my energy, right, on a specific group, right, or planet, or dimension. Right now, we'll get into how I, I categorize these later on, because you can talk to many beings, but where, in one sense, where are they coming from, or what's their frequency is what I'm after. Because when I get a tune coming in, or a call coming in in my ears when they ring, left or right, high or low vibrations, then I'll know what planet or being that's contacting me. That makes sense? So when your ear rings in the left or right, the right, ear, right ears are normally your ancestors. In the... <clears throat> If you're musically inclined, then you can know if it's an, a, the tone coming in is an A, B, C, D, E, F, or G, and how long the tone lasts will tell me how much time they have that they can communicate. Because on the other side, sometimes the, in your strength, your focus, and their focus and energy uh, can combine and have a, <clears throat> can have a duration for that call. Right? And that's why they start fading out, because the time is done. It's like uh, minutes on your phone. If, you don't have enough, if you're using all your minutes, then that call is going to go out. That makes sense? Because you don't have enough power to keep that conversation going, because it takes electricity. Which sometimes you can feel tired afterwards. That means some demon possession took your power. It just means you took your electrical power. And until you learn how to use the cosmic power, not your own personal power, I, I used my own personal power for decades, and then I finally figured out, and I'll teach you later, of how to use the cosmic power, right? A satellite, if you will, to make these, these connections. Anyway, um, so we're just connecting to a course or a direction. We're just honing our focus into a direction or directing our ions to a path and, uh, and, get, and understand someone else's plan, okay? So basically, it's... Telepathy is just reading others, two-way communication, and vibratory alignment. Right? 
right? Now, we talked about this as the message in the session just connects, just continues or fades out, then that's the end of it. And it's there for your safety. Because if you try to push beyond your own nutritional elements in your body, like calcium, potassium, this is what's burning the electricity out of your own body. Right? This is what's being turned into power. Right? Or some psychics are really good, but their bodies are in bad shape or their minds are in bad shape. Their minds are in bad shape because they're using, they're redirecting power out of their own physical shell to boost the signal. And that's not how we want to do it, guys. All right? And I'm going to teach the proper way, and that's what these classes are about. Now, once all that's faded out, then that's what we said is record. Because basically what you did is connect an electrical cord, an extension cord. And once that cord's done, we pull that cord out. And then we're going to record later. But right now we're going to record or record what it is that we downloaded that we can best sort of understand or remember. And like I said, Tuesday we'll get into the mediumship, triangulation, the holy trinity of what I mean by that. In order to transmit a signal out here on planet Earth, we need three, three antennas, if you will, to uh, connect the signal. But again, we'll talk about that tomorrow. So just to recap today, guys, we basically... Um, it's, Mondays are just going to be about divine messages. It's a brief overview of what we'll do or how we're going to be doing it. I'll explain some stuff or what I'm doing, but then I'll give you the divine message. And the divine message is that I gave you that things are tough right now for a lot of people, especially those who are choosing to get take to leave one path and get into another path. Some people are like, well, I'm not going to move until something better comes along. A lot of times that's not going to work out because it never comes along because you're still wasting all your energy or using your energy up in the old relationship. So when the or old job or whatever this is for you, right? Sometimes it means you just have to leave that path, free the energy up, right? Go within yourself and then be able to recalibrate your focus on what it is you want. Not what everyone else wants, but what do you want for your life? And once you refocus that, then part of these divine messages, you can connect with them and say, hey, this is a path I'm choosing. Do you all have any information about that? Any insight? Right? It's going to a guidance counselor. These messengers are just guidance counselors. They're going to help be your guide. They can't tell you what to do. They can say, well, this semester we have this class, this class, this class. But if environmental studies or impact doesn't include you or racial studies doesn't, but music does, then they can give you information on each one of these going forward. They can give you an idea of what the university or the universe city, right? The one city, the one verse city, right? Universe city. Does that make sense? Uni one verse, all these telepathetic uh, or telepathic frequencies, city. Their city is their homeland, their broadcast station. Is that making sense now? You see how we're dispelling the myths, you know, from this, these abilities, these talents, these gifts, whatever you want to call them. So they are able to guide you with information, but their information is not to be believed like a religion, or like a politician trying to sell you something. Right? It's just meant to share with you a bigger picture, and then from that bigger picture, you have to make the choice. It's your responsibility. Take responsibility for your thoughts, actions, and emotions, and when you make a decision, decide on what ion path you want, then open your heart, undefended, and receive the information or the message, and then go forward. All right? That's going to be about it, it today, guys, so you can see how we're going in a different path, but we are going to use some of the information we learned in the beginning 50 videos. So if we're talking about one, go back to that video and see if you can find out more information or just start watching those videos. They're all between 10 and 40 minutes, basically. Uh, and eventually what I am going to do is take all what I'm teaching you, take it offline, and then put it into a class on Udemy.com, or I'll charge for that in my specific classes, my uh, inner circle classes, my esoteric uh, private classes, right? And this will be a paid event that you have to pay to get into these. So right now I would encourage you because those 50 videos I will take down eventually, right? And you will, will have to take or pay for those, right? So take advantage that I'm sharing this information free right now. The part of my path is that I'm choosing to do this all online and all on video instead of going out doing lectures, classes, and whatnot. 
and getting paid that way. Right? I do have books and whatnot. One of my books, here's one of them right there. Yeah, right there. You got a fly still flying around. Um, right there. Um, and that's how I make my, my money. And so now I'm choosing a different path, a different way to create current currency, electrical currency flow. The electrical currency flow and the pathway I'm doing it, I can then exchange it in for whatever gold, silver, dollars, crypto I want. All right. So until next time, guys, like, subscribe, share, all that. Hit the like button, guys. All right. Appreciate you and we'll see you tomorrow.